good morning everyone welcome to our topic of discussion today that is supporting stability while nurturing disrupt disruptors i am sudha bhushan i am co-founder of expert professionals an indian consulting company serving multinational companies globally in their regulatory taxation and valuation needs i am the chairperson for entrepreneurs now committee at indian merchant chamber and i am also the member of indo indo french chamber of commerce i am advisor to lot of multi jurisdictional company to compliance to their foreign exchange laws and structuring under international taxation have to my credit five best selling books on international taxation and indian fdi i sit on the board of uh, quite a few listed indian listed companies like orient pro solutions limited and choice international to name the few i am an indian cpa registered valuer and an insolvency resolution professional with my introduction i would like to uh, welcome our uh, panel of uh, esteemed panel today Mr. Jan Perio and Alexander Estano Solas. The Asian century has arrived. We that is what we proclaimed in 2019 July, and at that time we had no idea what was to come. A global pandemic that few had anticipated, which not only triggered the most challenging global health crisis and economic downturn for a generation, but also accelerated and gave. new force to pre-existing trends including notably digitization new windows have opened for business across the region as we look forward to life beyond the pandemic while deep certainty certainly remains asia as a region exhibited resilience in the face of this extraordinary shock gdp growth has proved relatively stable through the pandemic and the Asian economy, which has contracted by 1.5 percent in 2020, while the world economy shrank by 3.2 percent, Asia is expected to rebound much faster than the global economy. In July 2021, as the report says from IMF, that Asia would be growing at 7.5 percent in 2021 and 6.4 percent in 2022, compared with 6 percent. and 4.9% for the world asian developing countries strive to expand and extend the concept of stable growth to alleviate the poverty traps how to merge the digital disruptions into better education health and general wellbeing initiatives disruptions through economic factors habitat change and digitization provides lot of opportunities yet it is worrying and impossible to grab what to expect what to change how to change and who is best equipped to do so so that the asia which is very well placed right now can strive towards a stable economic growth so to discuss this we have as i uh, introduced to you my panelists mr jean pierre zubizol and mr alexander estanosolas Let me take the privilege of introducing both of my esteemed panel today. Zion Pere Kobizol, he is a Swiss national and he is the founder and managing partner of CHC Group in Geneva and partner and ambassador of One Creation Investment with high environment impact. Zion was the co-founder and CEO of Edenwise Group SA. specialized dental clinics in switzerland from 2012 to 2015 he was a founder president and ceo from 1992 to 2013 of cct group management limited a consulting company specialized in risk performance and organizational efficiency from offices in geneva zurich london paris cairo and dubai Prior to that, he was the director of human resources services at Motorola Inc. International in Chicago, U.S. Besides that, he has co-founded the Association for Education of Children in South Asia, member of the board of Refugee Education Trust. Let me now introduce Mr. Alex. Alex is a president and CEO of Citrus Group, the globally awarded design consulting firm. 
and the founder of think tank metallexis.org he holds a masters in civil engineering and an mba with distinction from adam smith business school of glasgow university in great britain he has certified in project management from both ipma and prince 2 as well as strategy and innovation from international customer service association and is an international keynote speaker on system thinking and investment design consultant he has successfully completed projects in more than 25 countries and was recognized as a best european ceo in retail development from european ceo awards in 2015 the best european ceo in 2018 from ai global excellence awards and an international game changer from acq5 awards in 2019 with this introduction myself sudha bhushan from mumbai alex in greece and zen pere in switzerland we are here to discuss few of the critical aspects with regard to supporting stability while nurturing disruptors so alex let me start with you how would you define disruption from human and social perspective and how does influence uh, it influence our societies and companies uh first of all thank you thank you for the introduction shuda it's uh, wonderful to be here with you and jean pierre um early in the morning for us uh later uh, i guess for uh, most of the people who are uh, watching us in in asia um it's a very interesting subject and it's a huge subject to uh, expand in 45 minutes but uh, we will we'll do our best um we talk we talk more and more about disruption uh, and we talk about disruption in businesses we talk about disruption in societies um so disruption is usually uh, noted as uh, something that uh, breaks or changes rapidly uh and impactfully the way you normally do things um the key to this is uh, the the word do because we live in a, in a in a world that uh, is accelerating <coughs> excuse me and we're doing more and more things every day so we're bound to get more disrupted uh if if you stay uh, and and do nothing there's no way to disrupt you um we are witnessing different disruptors different disruptions whether these are business disruptions or the pandemic that you mentioned and uh, what we call you know black swan events keep coming more and more uh because as i said we 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 do a lot of um different things there is an influence which is much greater than before because uh, as a society we are much more uh connected so um the disruption travels faster further uh, and impacts a lot more people than before uh, you get uh, the pandemic that you mentioned but you have the flights that connect people who work around the world so in a in a very small period of time uh, you you have an impact from one side of the world to the other i think what is important uh, to say is that uh, we we will have disruption uh we will have disruption in any level and uh, the whole idea that i would like to note uh, in in the future of this uh, panel is uh, how to actually get used to dealing with disruption more because there's no way you can stop having disruptions thank you absolutely absolutely if you see this has been the norm since Uh, since ever the human being i think from uh, paleolithic age to neolithic age led by agriculture revolution to industrial revolution to information information age and now digital age mankind has always been used to disruptions i know this covid is has uh, disrupted i think everything that we could have uh, thought about so then uh, what's your view on this if i could ask the same question to you what will be your view on that uh well first of all uh, good morning everyone and i'm pleased also to uh to share that uh, panel with uh, suda and uh, and alex um the term disruptive derives from the latin uh, disruptere 
which means uh, break into pieces to burst. Uh, the language of uh, GAFA and other applications such as uh, Uber, for example, uh, refer to disruptive innovation or instead, I would say, innovation by disruption, one that shake up uh, the established position, bypasses the rules of the game or impose a new paradigm. The, the author, Martin Heidegger, pointed out in uh, Modern Technique that the ultimate manifestation of the will to power represents the greatest danger. No one can dispute, he says. Uh, science and technology have transformed our planet to the point of shaking immemorial, ecological, and ethnological balances to the point of making humankind doubt the meaning of their existence and their work, and even shaking his own identity. Jung, Carl Gustav Jung, uh, the famous Swiss uh, psychiatric, had already warned against the metamorphosis of archetypal systems uh, and called the approach necessary of descending into the depths. In particular, synchronicity, a coincidence that suddenly makes sense, uh, provoke a strong emotion carries profound transformation and occurs at the right time, opening the ground for all form of deviance. The later of being overtaken by our tool and become the tool of this, uh, maybe the peripherals. How many of you have been requested recently uh, by a robot to confirm that you are a human? <laughs> Disruptor may compensate for trends in the abuse of power in which the hegemonic uh, will of digital development is one of the illustrations. The disruptive process does not take into account human need of rooting, um, but rather to adapt to people's emotion and resilience skills. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so too. Uh, your mind then uh, disruption is not good, or is it good, or is it bad? And where does it lead us then? Well, uh, again, as many things, um, if we uh, if we take uh, the first the, the first definition, which is disruptive innovation and we compare with innovation by disruption you have the answer to your question um, innovation comes by positive disruption negative disruption obviously will in turn create problem but i wouldn't say i would never refer to disruptive innovation much more the contrary yeah yeah and, and all these disruptions, I think uh, if you see COVID-19, it appears that it has accelerated the pace of all this uh, uh, technological advancement and adoption and innovation that we were going through. And if uh, a global survey, it indicates that the companies accelerated their digitization of their customer and supply chain interactions and of internal op operations by three to four years and the share of the digitally enabled product by seven years. Can you beat it? Uh, as, as the report says that the sales of industrial robots in China increased by 19% in 2020. So then here, here is what when you are asking that robot is asking us to confirm that are we human? Alex, to you now, how, how do you think that this disruption that we are facing, in, it's so many in varied forms. It is linked to progress. Um, yes, well, uh, I think the, the, the discussion, as I expected, is a very interesting discussion. Um, uh, I'd rather not put a tag to disruption if it's good or bad, to go back, first of all, to your question. 
because uh, a disruption is uh, an unexpected event and you have to make the best out of it. So you talked about the pandemic mm -hmm. and you talked about, of course, uh, behind and uh, apart from the huge pain and loss that it has created, it has also created an acceleration and it has also created a, a, a social advancement, if you want, because we saw um, countries working together, scientists working together, exchanging information, working much faster than before, trying to um, organize uh, the reaction to that. Even for us, uh, European Union had uh, changed uh, its policy in terms of financing uh, countries. So it, it has it has created a lot of, if you want, um, a spillover effect to a lot of other sectors. Um, uh, disruption is directly linked to progress because uh, you mentioned metallaxis. <coughs> Excuse me. You mentioned metallaxis, the think tank we created. Metallaxis is the Greek word for mutation. And although it has a bad connotation sometimes to it, what we are today is the result of random uh, mutation in, uh, in our DNA, in our DNA and the progress that has evolved through that. So um, the progress and disruption are directly linked. It's, it's partly what we said before about, uh, you know, um, if you sit doing nothing, you cannot be disrupted. So it pushes out of your comfort zone. It creates a lot of problems, but it actually is there to um, change the world uh, as it is happening, uh, both in good and bad terms. Uh, and the, the whole idea is that um, humanity in, in general has to come up with ways to become better, uh, more efficient, and provide a better future through that. So for us, disruption is directly linked to progress. Definitely, definitely. And as we see, uh, as you are, it, it is sometimes by compulsion and sometimes it may be uh, by uh, will that uh, we are getting disrupted. I mean, we have been. So what are the various types as in Zen Pere to you uh, from the perspective, uh, general perspective? What do you think that we have different type of uh, disruptors and therefore various approaches to nurture them? Uh, you know, uh, while talking with Asia region, Asia is a very, the, uh, is a, um, it's such a very uh, region, which is now on the verge of transformation. And this transformation, if you see, is driven by so many uh, factors. And digitization is certainly one of those factors. So can you relate these disruption, disruptors uh, into the Asia region? Oh, uh, yes, I can. <laughs> um, uh, whether we need to define what's Asia, uh, I've had the privilege of working or traveling uh, in, uh, in Asia. And, um, you know, once you travel in the country, you, you realize that most of the countries are different one to, uh, one to the other. And it's difficult to... Um, you know, to anticipate what will be the impact for a region uh, and more locally uh, the impact. And disruption is not new. Uh, disruption, and I'm talking dis disruption in a business, uh, in a business sense. Uh, I will touch the question of medical and COVID uh, in a moment, but um, uh, every, every, 10 or 15 years, uh, we had wave of disruption. Okay, if you take the 80 to the 90, um, <clears throat> uh, with the influence of uh, pension fund, then it was a high finance, uh, finance uh, disruption. Okay, um, uh, forcing companies for important operational efficiency and for the shareholders to do the same. In the 90 to early uh, 2010, it was globalization. Uh, uh, with, the open of, uh, with the opening of uh, many socialist economy, um, then we and companies went into 
global competition. Uh, now, since uh, the 2010, companies, particularly in Asia, have been grappling with extreme digitalization and became major disruptors. Um, if we take uh, China with Tencent, Alibaba, Didi, uh, in Japan, Life Robotic, in, uh, in Korea, Naver, those have been disruptors in their business sector. Um, with extreme digitalization, companies are entering into the hard part of the subject. Um, artificial intelligence, 5G, ultra connectivity, centralized programming software, all being put in blockchain. Um, we would be naive uh, to think that disruptor will prevail over disrupted. If we take uh, the automobile sector, the disruptor Tesla uh, at the forefront of the electric cars uh, and the autonomous vehicle. Um, but is that better than BMW or Genesis to take different regions in the world uh, who put uh, their energy into creativity and operational efficiency? This battle will be very tough among the disruptors. Uh, and some may actually um, win, as uh, Alex would, would say, a Pyrrhic victory. Um, so what should be done? Uh, the answer is clear. Flee the battle, uh, flee the battlefield where aggressive and resistant disruptor and disrupted are interested only by war profit. Essentially, we have three types of uh, disruptor, suppliers, expanded and personalized that we are seeing today. Um, the extreme digitalization needs suppliers. Uh, with the battle uh, in the car sector, for example, um, they are all battling, but uh, producers of semiconductors are rubbing their hands today. Okay, because to move the engine of a car from aspirated, normal aspirated uh, engine to the electrics, um, it is necessary to multiply the number of semiconductors in the car by two. Okay, and if we move to the automated engine, or autom uh, autonomous cars, it's again multiplied by two. So, for example, that disruption is create an opportunity for the semiconductor companies. Okay, and we see it today because we have shortage and we have delay in uh, in delivery. It's the same uh, with uh, the expanded. Um, we can see now an expansion. Uh, in controllers, air controllers for drones, okay, driverless trains, and crewless aircraft. Okay, so while we are disrupting in one part of business, the other part of business is expanding to uh, to other things. And then um, the question of personalization: if we see the luxury business. Uh, LVMH, Gucci, L'Oreal, those companies are now using uh, bloggers and influencers to have the direct contact with the customer, okay, with the value of their services or product. Okay, so yes, it is a disruption, uh, but it offers some uh, opportunities for others. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the way we are doing business has completely changed. And it is giving rise to newer business models, which is uh, so much different from the one which we are used to. Now, these uh, emerging new uh, business models. So is this digital disruption? Alex, to you. My next question is to you, Alex. Is this digital disruption? Is it linked to social imbalances? And it, is it resulting into bifurcation of society, as many say? 
because it has changed everything the way we sleep read shop and the remain we remain fit everything has changed and there is a there is a cloud of people who are very very uh, digital savvy and then there are there is a segment of people who are just do not understand this digitization so what is your take on that how do you uh, think that is it actually creating in or in any other way is it creating the social imbalances um you're very right and this is a very uh, challenging question that uh, uh, everybody's being asked um, um, a, a lot of people see it as a, a problem uh, and it is uh, an issue that needs to be discussed and managed because as in any innovation you have innovators you have early adopters you have a early majority a late majority but this wave of innovation keeps coming and coming and coming and of course there are um different phases and uh, uh, different uh, adoption of uh, the digitalization and the disruption innovation that uh, this is happening right now um the biggest question is should we and we come back to the question of uh, uh, how we how we feel about the future and the metallaxis uh, org that we created the biggest question is should we be afraid and try to stop the uh, innovation process not that we can but uh, some people think they <laughs> they can do that even but should we should we control should we be extra cautious of how uh, innovation spreads out through the world and if it creates uh, imbalances? The answer is uh, yes, but with a completely different way than most of the people believe. I think we should further accelerate the adoption of um, digital innovation uh, and uh, create smaller imbalances this way. So not by making it slower, more difficult to uh, adopt uh, controlling who and how and how much it costs, but we should give incentives to bring everybody up to speed as fast as possible, uh, whether that's in geographical uh, sense, whether that's in social and economic sense. But the whole idea is to make the world move faster in a positive way. So nurture innovation but provide the tools and the base for everyone to have the benefits of using it. I know it sounds a bit idealistic, but still I think that every organization and every government and every uh, entity should work towards that uh, idea. So yes to innovation, yes to digital um, uh, transformation, yes to any kind of innovation which is better, uh, the market and the people will decide which is better. Um, uh, but the whole idea is to let everybody be able to use it as much as possible. Absolutely. I can't agree more with you, Alex. You know, every time that we have moved to the next level of economic growth, there has always been the concerns over uh, job losses due to disruption or many other social imbalances that it gives rise to. However, there is a need of shift. Only there is a shift that needs to happen. Rather than blocking it, we have to embrace it in its as it is. Uh, I think if I, if I can just add one sentence, sorry. Uh, I think what is interesting in this case is that the innovation and the disruption that we're seeing now due to technology will create a huge GDP uh, reduction worldwide. Uh, this is something that uh, most people do not talk about. Uh, so we will have to redefine a lot of the social issues and the distribution of uh, wealth and how we work. But that's a different discussion altogether. But no one is talking about the GDP uh, fall that will uh, be created from optimizing, actually. It is through optimizing, through, through optimizing a lot of the things we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then... Um to you. You are an expert in the definition and implementation of health policies for several EU countries. Could you give us examples of disruptions generated by the pandemic uh, in from your uh, vast experience? 
Well, that's uh, I was um, I agree with uh, I strongly agree with uh, with Alex. I was thinking if I if I if I try to take away uh, the mobile telephone that I offer my grandson, uh, I think it will be very very disrupted. Um, so I, I think we are going that direction, um, and um, the health sector is, is is probably the one. Uh, one sector, by the way, it's a bigger sector worldwide uh, in terms of uh, overall business, um, uh, where we do not have a choice than going into disruption, but innovative disruption. Uh, and, and few few examples. Um, but just a point before, it's um, it's a sector where. Uh, the aversion to risk is a culture. Okay, so we need to be extremely careful when it comes to health because we have always the question of the life of the patient. Okay, um, but what we see is many, many disruption, and I'm sure every day you are you are uh, you know realizing uh, this. But just a few few things. Uh, the 3D printing revolution uh, has already proven um, in uh, dermatology, in heart transplantation, that in less than 10 years, we will be able to print um, any, any organs, any human organs, and compensate for the lack of organs of transplantation. Okay. Oh, is it? That's a vast, that's, that's a huge, huge job. Many, many things that are on the way, and in the next 10 years, it will be the. the uh, what will change as well is um, the, the monitoring of patients. They, they will be connected with all sorts of devices, regardless of how we put those devices uh, on the patient with digital stethoscopes, um, with vitamin deficiencies, uh, with oximeters to assess the level of oxygen. I mean, all kinds of equipment uh, that will contribute to the patient well-being. The coming years will be uh, a big growth in those uh, devices. Um, and, and, and we need to see today, we have many, many of them uh, already. This uh, advance in technology will affect pharmacies as well, where the delivery of, um, uh, of treatment, uh, and that's already the case in the US, for example, uh, will be at the door of the patient, okay, o automatically, okay. If we come to, um, uh, if we come to COVID, what we have seen in COVID um, is first, uh, the first re risk was the financing of the impact of COVID. Okay, so all the countries went together and financed uh, all this. Um, what we have seen as well is the development of vaccines in a very, very short period of time. Uh, but why did we do that? It's just because we we disrupted um, not on the research. We disrupted um, the uh, the logistic of all this. In other words, we developed the vaccine in parallel. Okay? All phases were taken in parallel rather than uh, in uh, in the order that would take three, four, five, seven years sometime. Okay. So we have created lean organizations within the pharmaceutical industry. Okay. What we have seen as well is a high level of collaboration between scientists. Um, they exchange information. Uh, we, the, the population didn't see all this, but it, it was remarkable uh, collaboration. And to, to the final comments I would, I would make, that, that there was a lot of disrupted people, okay, that we see today, you know, they are in the street, 
in France, in Italy, in, uh, I don't know about Greece and India, but I'll tell you in continental Europe, they are, they are anti-vax, we, uh, we call them. But why? Just because, um, we have to learn to communicate with those people. Disrupting is one thing. If we disrupt, if we disrupt ourselves, it's okay. But we have other mass of people that will be disrupted. Uh, and therefore, oh, wow. a big impact. that has a big impact on them. We have never seen patients that we select the treatment. I've never seen that. Okay? Yep, so Today, yeah. uh, this vaccine more than this one. They don't know why, but they would prefer it. Okay? Um, wow. And everybody is, uh, is a scientist today. Okay, journalists, population, everybody has an opinion uh, of it, which makes the disruption very difficult. Okay. I don't um, think you. So all, all, all this uh, has created probably the summit of uh, disruption and disrupted. Okay, because yes. whenever we talk about disruption, we also need to think about the disrupted people, the people that have no choice than, uh, you know, follow the disruption. I can't, I mean, absolutely agree uh, that besides the disruption, you have to think about the disrupted people as, as Alex had rightly pointed out, how is it impacting the people? And one more thing, um, one more thing that you said, collaboration. I think collaboration is a way of working going forward. If you see our panel also, uh, you are from Switzerland, Alex from Greece, me from Mumbai, India, we are sitting and discussing so conveniently from our office offices or home. So that's, that's what has been made easy also. So Alex, now coming to your area of work, your work is known to be based on system thinking. Can you tell us how such a mental model support Better outcome. Um, yes, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm intrigued about this discussion. I think we should extend the panel for a few days, not for a few <laughs> hours. Uh, I, I was. Um, I'm not sure. Thank you again. You said that. But <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about what Jean Pierre said uh, and the um, anti-vax movement and everything, and I was. I think this is a very good example of systems thinking, and we, we use this in our uh, strategic approach to whatever we believe. So let's, let's see a viewpoint of modern society that leads up to the anti-vaccine movement. Um, we have families that uh, sit uh, in the living room, each one watching the movies they want, not sharing the movie, not having to negotiate which movie they will watch during the night, but they each have a tablet or a screen or a, and they log into Netflix and they see the movie they want uh, at the same time. They yes, order yes. delivery food, eat, uh, one each Chinese, the other one chooses Italian, the other one chooses uh, Greek or whatever. So... Um, we live in a very personalized way and we have lost the ability to negotiate, to collaborate, to uh, step back and understand our um, place in a wider uh, system, whether that's our family, uh, whether that's our business. We see that in business. You, you, we have a huge disruption from people in business. Everybody has an idea how to be a CEO. Uh, and uh, so I understand that, um, and, and my my understanding is that uh, I don't believe in very autocratic uh, structures, uh, but still everybody has to wear his own hat and, and try to contribute from uh, his or her viewpoint. Uh, but still this disruption is leading to, um, I think, the, the systemic problem that Jean-Pierre uh, expressed as a society in general, everybody's a doctor, everybody can do whatever they want. And if they don't do that, they see it as a loss of freedom. So if I want Chinese for dinner and my father wants Italian, uh, he restricts my freedom by making me eat uh, uh, Italian and not Chinese. That's a very simplistic way of putting it forward. Uh, 
uh, systems thinking um, understands and builds on the emergent values of the relationships between different uh, elements of the system. And I think that what this society has lost post uh, Renaissance with the Western, if you want, uh, very much approach of uh, analysis, and uh, everybody now knows that analysis means paralysis, uh, has uh, given us the inability to collaborate and to understand how one uh, sector affects the other and how one um, sector mm-hmm. work with each other in order to produce better results. Uh, so systems thinking for us is a mental model. It is based on a very ancient Greek, by the way, philosophy. The whole is bigger than the sum of the parts, uh, which everybody knows. Uh, and uh, I think this is the mental model that will help us deal with complex situations, understand how the pandemic um, uh, impacts businesses, travel, uh, um, uh, health, and, and, and so much more than what is uh, from uh, the first viewpoint uh, obvious and apparent. Yes, certainly I completely agree as in the whole is bigger than the sum of parts. And if I had to sum this up and I will take you uh, one of your last uh, take on the thing that it is that developing a culture of disruption is must. However, we have to align it with the culture purpose values, which is transparent with to the needs of customer employees and all the stakeholders. So while I thank you already uh, for joining this uh, panel, your take on this, that we have to develop and adopt the culture of disruption. However, it needs to take into consideration everything else, like culture, value, purpose, and it has to meet the needs of every stakeholder. Alex, maybe you can start. Sure. Uh, Thank you for this wonderful discussion as we close um, the panel. Uh, I think that we have to understand that disruption will never stop. And I think, as I said in the beginning, and this is the best way to close, we need to understand how to make the best of it and not try to stop uh, the progress. We cannot stop the the, the progress. As you know, record companies decided to sue people who were downloading through Napster uh, uh, songs trying to stop uh, streaming of uh, music, uh, which apparently could not work. So the whole idea is how to um, adapt the new situation and try to work with it in a more uh, democratic and a more, if you want, efficient way towards a better tomorrow for the whole society. That's that's my viewpoint. Yeah. <clears throat> John Kerry, your view on that? Yes, I... Um... Uh, I see the time running, and uh, uh, and I wouldn't like to forget some of the disrupted um, because it was in uh, in the plan as well. Uh, we should never forget uh, that, despite of all what we say, and I fully agree um, that um, eight hundred and ten millions people are living on this planet below the level of poverty. Okay, and every time we have those discussions, uh, we talk on a you know philosophical, highly operational things uh, down uh, down the reality. Uh, there are people dying from uh, hunger in this uh, in this world. Back to your question. Um, I think we should not, as, as we did in the past, uh, <clears throat> we should not confront the old world, the new world. Okay? It, it's, it's always a process, a continuous process. And now we are working with different systems, uh, different attitudes, different emotions. Um, I think within companies, um, uh, it's, it's positive because we allow people in those systems to be creative, to be innovative, um, to make decisions that will satisfy the customers. I think a disruptive innovation is around the customer as well, okay, in the contact we have with customers. So 
uh, uh, disruptive culture uh, requires people to be permanently educated, not educated at the beginning of their life and then they have professional activities. No, they will be educated as we go. Um, and that, I think, uh, very positive things. Um, we, need to, we need to remember things, you know. Uh, was Steve Jobs a disruptor? Was uh, uh, Jamachi uh, Tata a disruptor? Uh, was uh, Li Byung-chul from Samsung a disruptor? Yes, they were, okay, many years ago, okay? Um, and I think this is a, um, <clears throat> a continuous process that we need to be careful about the disrupted, but the world is going that direction. And uh, we can see in, um, in the health, I mean, you refer to Netflix, uh, Netflix is basically anticipating your need before you know your need. <laughs> okay? Uh, in, in the health sector, it may be the same. Okay? We may find out that the patient has a certain things that he doesn't know. Okay? Just because of this evolution uh, that has to be obviously well managed, but the most important is to not to let the disrupted on the back of the road. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to balance between the two. You have to say something, Alex? I just wanted to say because Jean-Pierre so rightfully talked about uh, uh, global poverty. Uh, and I have a positive view on the world. I think um, uh, the, the percentage of people living below poverty has been dramatically reduced in the last 50 years. We do have 10% uh, of the world population living below the poverty line, but it used to be 40% and it used to be 50% 100 years ago. So I think that um, uh, we, we, we do have to think of the disrupted, uh, but we do have to understand that the world is not moving in such a bad direction that everybody keeps highlighting. It also it is also doing um, a lot of uh, things the good way or a better way than before. And uh, I think that we should keep that positive note. If, if Jean-Pierre agrees, <laughs> and should, of course. <laughs> no, it's not a question of agree or not. Um, it's, uh, it's just a question, it's just the following question. Yes, uh, the poverty level has reduced, but with COVID, it has increased. Okay. But uh, my, my concern is not this, because this is a debate, um, you know, I had it many times. Uh, <clears throat> the debate is the UN um, has made uh, studies that in, um, in 2030, there will be still 660 million people below the line, okay? It will be a reduction, but the SDG one, the first one, okay, that says uh, we should not have anybody anywhere below the line of the poverty, that's the UN decided, okay? By 2013, they will fail that objective. Okay, that's my concern. Okay, is trying to accept that this is a fact. Okay, so we agree, but in a different way. <laughs> I think I agree that, uh, as I was saying, that disruption is a great equalizer, especially the digital economy that we are entering into the digital world. It's a great equalizer because. It provides the opportunity to the person who has the skill set. You don't need too much of infrastructure around you to reach to your uh, your audience. You can be, if you have the skill, you can reach to your audience in much lesser cost. So uh, while we have to look in, as Piero has uh, already pointed out, that we have to take care of the disrupted, we have to move in the direction in the manner that the uh, good facts about any type of disruption. Disruption is so many different types. So one has to learn from it and at the same time 
we have to progress forward from it and uh, look into the best possible way especially in context of asia which is uh, on the cusp of transformation all this uh, uh, digitization and various type of disruptions that we have should be able to take it forward only so uh, with this uh, gentlemen i would really thank you both for uh, having uh, this uh, very incisive panel discussion thank you for your uh, time and uh, your thoughts thanks to you thank you very much thank you very much thank, thank you, you.